constantly nonstop. And he, he's done a lot for us. Um, and the second phrase is, all good things must come to an end. Um, you know, I was talking to Father, and we, we both were, you know, we knew it had to come sometime, but we were both, you know, very saddened um, that it had to come so soon. Um, as Father mentioned to me earlier, he says, is there a way he can fail a class and have to repeat it next year? <laughs> I said, boy, don't we wish, but uh, it's too late. <laughs> He's already passed everything. Um, and we can certainly hope that some new freshmen come in next year and will also um, keep the Sacred Heart Concert Series going on and, and have a dedication um, to the church. Um, like I said, that it's very difficult for that. So in uh, two weeks from today, John uh, will be graduating and he'll be going back home to Shreveport, Louisiana. And you know, when fall comes around, of course he's not gonna be here. So uh, this is gonna be his final uh, performance um, for us today, listening to John play. And certainly, you know, we wish him the very best of his careers and he knows that he's in our hearts here at Sacred Heart and that he always has a place to come back to. So um, let's put our hands together and, and welcome John him out for his final concert. Thank you so much for coming out. Um, as Carl said, this is my last performance uh, for Sacred Heart. Actually, probably for violin for a while, because um, I don't want to do violin anymore um, as a career. But yeah, I mean, this program has been literally a year in the making. Um, Ohad and I have been working on this sonata um, since um, August of 2021. That's a lie, more of October, sorry. I've been practicing it since August, so it's been a while. Um, but I mean, we're very excited to finally, um, you know, show you um, what this piece is. Um, and speaking of, do you want to talk about this piece? This is Ohad Nativ, our wonderful pianist. Well, um, so in this uh, program today, we'll be presenting two of Metner's later works. That is the second uh, violin sonata, Opus 44, and the piano quintet, Opus Post. Um, it is actually his last composition. And both of these works present similar but also different aspects of Metner's personality. So Nikolai Metner, Nikolai Karlovich Metner as the full name, excuse my Russian pronunciation, I don't speak Russian, um, was a colleague of fairly more well-known composers such as uh, Sergei Rachmaninov and Alexander Skriabin. All of them graduated together from the Moscow Conservatory at about the same time, in this case, the year 1900 was Metner's graduation from the Moscow Conservatory, uh, where he contrasted the very traditionalist Russian style that was taught, uh, which sort of came from the tradition of Tchaikovsky back in the 1880s, uh, with a very German-influenced, like German Austrian-influenced approach to composition. Uh, he really appreciated and studied heavily the music of Bach and Beethoven, specifically Bach for counterpoint and Beethoven for motivicism and form. And it's really impossible to talk about what Metner does, especially within these two works as a composer, without talking about form, motivicism, and counterpoint. What is motivicism? Essentially, it's the process by which we take a motif or a small collection of motifs, which are short musical ideas, sometimes they're melodies, and in this case, as I will present in a second, just a series of four notes, and we use them throughout an entire composition in a variety of contexts to create a sort of musical journey and to give a sense of cohesion to the entire work. Within the violin sonata, Opus 44 in G major, Metner presents four movements which all share most of their motivic material. Sorry, three movements, that's my mistake. These three movements are preceded by an introduction that begins with a four note figure, which will be used throughout the entire work. And John, will you demonstrate? That is the four note figure. And you can expect to hear it coming back in a whole lot of permutations 
and actually very dramatically as a sort of triumphant return at the very end of the work. What else Bettner does is that he actually connects the three movements of the sonata with little cadenzas. And these cadenzas allow this entire work, which already shares its um, motivic material between the movements, to become this giant 45-minute cohesive piece, almost like a single narrative continuation, despite referencing very traditionalist German forms. The first movement is an introduction in sonata form. The second is a theme in variations with some very subversive and folk-like expressions. And the third is a rondo that has both a C section, uh, that is a tertiary idea, and a very thorough development of all the material presented thus far. What I believe is very interesting about this work in particular, and you will see this perhaps even more so with the quintet, is that Metner, even though he is appealing to the very traditionalist formal style of composition, still sprinkles in a few programmatic ideas, that is, ideas that connect the sort of abstract nature of music to things that lie beyond it. In this case, uh, Metner actually specifically references a Russian phrase within the finale. Uh, the phrase is, which means spring is coming. And Jana, will you present the tiram param? Oh. Uh. So you can hear, you can hear the repetition of those uh, syllables, um, and that obviously occurs throughout and sort of signals that the third movement is indeed a triumph, which is certainly what it sounds like. The second movement uh, is a theme in variations with a theme that references a lot of Russian Orthodox chant. It is very slow, it is almost like a syllabic uh, chant, essentially, and it has a very limited uh, range of notes. However, Metner is able to really draw it out into a variety of themes, a variety of characters. And of course, as a whole, this work is wonderfully lyrical, memorable, and dramatic. Uh, so we hope you enjoy.